Yogmaya Neopani, Trailblazing the Path of Religious and Social Rebellion. Yogmaya and her 67 followers jumped into the Arun River in 1998 Vikram Sambat and performed the largest water burial in Nepal's history. Born in 1924 in Nepal Dara, situated in Majua Besi under the Bhospur district of Nepal, Yogmaya came from a Brahmin family. Among the three children of her parents, Srilal Upadhyaya Nupani and Chandrakala Nupani, she was the sole daughter. Her two brothers were named Puspalal and Agnidhar. Yogmaya was married to Manorat Koirala at the age of seven, following the Brahmin rituals of that time. She was a victim of domestic violence as it was difficult for her to adjust to her new home at such a young age. When she was a teenager, Yogmaya left home and went to her father's home. However, her family and community rejected her, telling her to go back to her husband's house. When she was not allowed to enter her husband's house, her father gave her and her daughter a place to stay. There are two different accounts of the fate of Yogmaya's husband, Manorat Kurala. According to the more popular narrative, he died when he was 10 years old, leaving Yogmaya a child widow. This is often cited as the reason for her in-law's abuse. However, some sources claim that her husband never actually died and that he remarried after Yogmaya ran away from home. This would mean that Yogmaya was never actually a child widow and that her in-laws abuse was for other reason. The truth of the matter is unknown as there is no definitive evidence to support either account. However, the two narratives offer different insights into Yogmaya's life and the challenges she faced. Following her experience of societal disregard, the roots of rebellion against the prevailing social turmoil and the unequal treatment of daughters were sown within her. During her adolescent years, Yogmaya found herself as a solitary individual within the confines of the ultra-conservative and oppressive Brahmin society of that time. Yet despite these constraints, she secretly developed affection for a Brahmin youth from the neighboring Cardale family. Given the unfavorable perception of remarriage or widow marriage within Hindu society, Yogmaya made the daring decision to flee her home in Bhospur. Subsequently, she entered into a remarriage with her lover in Assam, India. Scholars have highlighted that Yogmaya was profoundly influenced by the teachings of Dayananda Saraswati, a reformist Hindu leader whose influence extended widely across India while she resided in Assam. Having shared a life for over a decade, Yogmaya eventually divorced her second husband and left her daughter in his care. Various sources provide conflicting accounts with some stating that her second husband passed away while others claim that the couple underwent a divorce through mutual agreement. Certain historical accounts suggest that after the demise of her second husband, she entered into a third marriage with a man named Dotel. Discrepancies arise among historians regarding the number of daughters Yogmaya had, with some literature pointing to two daughters and others suggesting just one. However, records confirm that Nain Kalanyo Pane was indeed her daughter. Yogmaya arrived at the resolution of forsaken marriage and material attachment, opting to embark on a testing path of life as an ascetic, dedicating the remainder of her days to spiritual pursuit. Although it was relatively commonplace for men to embrace ascetism within the Hindu society of that period, the same was considerably uncommon for women. Subsequently, Yogmaya journeyed back to her village in Majwar Besi, accompanied by her daughter Nainkala. There, she entrusted her daughter Nainkala to her brother Agnidhar Nupani and sister-in-law Ganga. She relinquished all her obligations and undertook the life of an ascetic. In this phase, Yogmaya also initiated the composition of her religious verse. Remarkably, both Yogmaya and her daughter Nainkala were without formal education. Nonetheless, her poems were meticulously transcribed and published by her literate followers. Subsequently, Yogmaya embarked on a spiritual journey as an ascetic, traversing various regions of Nepal. Throughout her travels, she encountered several renowned religious figures, among them was Swargadwari Mahaprabhu of Vayananda II. 
This eminent spiritual leader lauded her devoteness and subsequently imparted yogic spiritual teachings to her within the Josmani Santa tradition. Following her pilgrimage, Yogmaya chose to return to her village where she engaged fervently in the practice of meditation. Yogmaya delved into intense meditation practice during her spiritual journey, which included challenging techniques. In the heat of summer, she meditated close to a fire by day, while in the beating cold of winter, she practiced meditation naked with a chilly cave. Her dedication extended to fasting, with periods of meditation lasting for weeks while subsisting only on water. All on her path, she encountered people who recited her poems and reconnected with her relatives. Her fame and influence grew as her unique verses left an indelible impact on the locals of Madhura Pesi. Among her devotees, Bhim Bahadur Basnet stood out, eventually constructing a hut for Yogmaya and compiling her poems. These poems were later published from Sikkim, solidifying her legacy. The hardship and prejudices that Yogmaya encountered in her life prior to becoming an ascetic significantly shaped her perception of inequalities within Nepali society. Despite adhering to and advocating for Hindu spiritual philosophy, her own experiences highlighted the perceived gender bias, caste-based disparities, and economic inequality prevalent in the patriarchal society of her time in Nepal. Her poetic compositions aim to raise awareness about this deeply ingrained discrimination, striking a chord with numerous individuals in her virginity around Gospur. Upon the publication of her poems, her message resonated beyond her local community, attracting followers from regions as distant as Darjeeling and Kathmandu. Yogmaya's teaching exerted a profound impact on a substantial portion of the improvised and politically marginalized populace. Nevertheless, her influence posed a threat to the privilege of local feud landlords affiliated with the Bosnia dynasty as well as individuals of proximity to Kathmandu's central administrators. These groups grew increasingly vehement in her opposition to ascetic and her followers. The bargaining popularity of her activism attracted the notice of even the authoritative Rana regime's administrators. Through her poetic verses, she openly castigated the rulers who thrive on corruption and infringement upon the fundamental rights of the people. Foremost, Yogmaya championed the cause of widow marriage, advocating not only for its legal and societal recognition, but also its active promotion at both social and state level. During that era, society remained entrenched in a narrow mindedness, deeply entwined with the traditional practices like casteism and untouchability. Additionally, she vociferously criticized the unethical practices of Brahmins who manipulated and exploited people through religious doctrines and Puranic teaching. She espoused the notion that absolution from wrongdoing was attained not solely through alms giving to Brahman, but by illuminating individuals with awareness to free them from unintentional transgression. Employing of medium of prayings, she disseminated enlightening poetic discourses among her followers, effectively addressing a spectrum of anomalies, injustices, and atrocities prevalent in the society. Within the local context, among marginalized communities such as women, Dalits, and overlooked groups, she is revered not only as Mata or Great Grandmother, but also as Sakti Mata, reflecting her embodiment of strength. Additionally, she adeptly practiced challenging yoga techniques. She initiated delivering discourses against social injustice, unfavorable cultural practices, and unquestioned tradition. Yogmaya's descent extended to the prevailing inequalities and disparities within society, including the condemnation of practices like sati, child marriage, and caste discrimination. She fervently advocated for social equality, advocating for the right to remarry for women, similar to the practice afforded to men. Her influence arose at the time when society demanded reform, just as men were allowed to remarry after the demise of their spouses. She asserted that women of marriageable age should have the same right to remarry voluntarily. Through her religious gatherings and prayers, she confronted caste-based discrimination and untouchability welcoming individuals from caste like Kami, Damai, Sarki, Dalit and other marginalized groups into her fold. Her efforts found particular resonance among the Dalit community 
who became her devoted followers. In 1987 Bikram Sambat, Yogmaya dispatched one of her devotees named Prem Narayan Bhandari to Kathmandu. Over time, Prem Narayan Bhandari became recognized as Hare Ram Prabhu among the people of Kathmandu. Subsequently, when the then Prime Minister of Nepal, Juddha Samsar, expressed his intention to meet with Bhandari, a message was relayed from Bhandari to Yogmaya. This message contained the Prime Minister's assurance to uphold the sacred commitment of truth. Nevertheless, the administrator failed to make any significant changes to their oppressive and corrupt mindset over the subsequent four years. Growing increasingly disillusioned with the conduct of the rulers in Kathmandu, Yogmaya decided to send Bandari to the capital once more in 1993 Bikram Sambat. Towards the conclusion of the same year, Yogmaya herself journeyed to Kathmandu accompanied by her daughter. During her visit, Prime Minister Juddha Samsar welcomed Yogmaya. In response to his inquiry about her wishes, she declared, Arms of the Holy Order of Truth and Justice. Despite this, the anticipated concrete reforms did not come to fruition, leaving Yogmaya and her followers disillusioned. Yogmaya engaged in a discussion with Prime Minister Juddha Samsar, advocating for an end to caste-based discrimination and gender bias in pursuit of religious equality. However, Rana Prime Minister Juddha Samsar was unable to fulfill his commitment to address Yogmaya's demands. Subsequently, in an impact move, Yogmaya and 240 of her followers announced their intention of self-immolate in Agni Kunda or Fire Pit. Before departing the Kathmandu Valley, Yogmaya presented Prime Minister Juddha Samsar with a list of 24 reform-oriented demands that she and her followers sought for the betterment of the country. This alarmed Juddha Samsar and his followers, who interpreted Yogmaya as a potential threat to their political dominance. As a result, they orchestrated efforts to send her back to Vosbur that same year. During the later part of 1980 Bikram Sambat, dissent against the Rana regime started gaining momentum, spurred in a large part by India's struggle for independence. In reaction, the Rana government adopted a more brutal stance towards the dissidents. The demands for reform championed by Yogmaya and her supporters went largely unheeded by the authorities. Additionally, her group's activities remained under close surveillance by the Rana rulers. In 1992 became Sambat, Yogmaya comments open protest against the oppressive and corrupt Rana rulers. She asserted that the moment had arrived to initiate a fresh era by eradicating injustice, superstitious belief, and corrupt customs entrenched in Nepali society. Yogmaya proclaimed that given her proximity to liberation, she was unwilling to become entangled in the shifting tide of the times. She indicated her intention to offer herself as a sacrifice in the name of God in the near future. When Juddha Samsar did not keep his promise, Yogmaya decided to sacrifice herself on a huge par with 240 of her followers in a ritual called Agni Samadhi. She ordered her followers to make a public appeal for arms from the general public by Kartik Sukla Purnima. She also sent personal requests for arms to Madhav Samsar, the then chief administrators of Dankuta district and Prime Minister Juddha Samsar. As her entreaties once again fell on deaf ears with administrators, ignoring her plea, Yogmaya began openly preparing for her intended sacrifice. She chose the death of her self-sacrifice to be 27 Kartik, 1975 Pikram Sambat. Fearing that the mass self-immolation might take place as scheduled, Prime Minister Juddha Samsar took action by deploying approximately 500 security personnel at the designated venue of the event. In response to this, 11 male devotees were confined to Dhankuta jail, while many of the women who had participated in the Agni Samadhi, including Yogmaya and her daughter Nain Kala, were detained in the Radha Krishna temple in Bhojpur. After a period of three months, the female members were released from custody, while most of the male followers were freed from prison three years later in Chaitra of 1997 Bikram Sambat. After all her devotees were released from prison, Yogmaya decided to go ahead with her plan to self-immolate. However, this time she wanted to keep it a secret. 
C. Set a new date for Salt Immolation on 22nd Asar, 1998 Bikram Sambat, which was the holy day of Harishyani Ekadasi. C. Only allowed a select group of devotees to join her. The religious ritual of water burial, or Zal Samadhi, began on the night of Asar 21st. On the morning of Asar 22nd, at 4 a.m., Yogmaya climbed a rock on the bank of Arun River with a plate containing an oil lamp on her head. She then ritually committed suicide by jumping into the river. After Yogmaya, 65 of her devotees jumped into the river one after the other that day. Two more of her devotees committed suicide by jumping into the river the next day. In total, 68 people died in this incident. Yogmaya and her 67 followers jumped into the Arun River in 1990 Bikram Sampat, performing the largest water burial in Nepal's history. Yogmaya Nyopani was a Nepali religious leader and social reformer who started a religious movement in Bhospur in the early 1900s. She is considered to be one of the most important figures in the Nepali history and her movement is credited with making a significant difference in Nepali society against century-old evils such as corruption, superstition, discrimination, bribery, untouchability and gender inequality. For her contribution in 2072 Bikram Sampath, the government of Nepal issued a postage stamp in her name. Thank you.